Welcome back to the Southampton save. Thank you for your continued support on this series here as it, dovetail, as it dovetails with the F122 McLaren career mode. Thank you for your support on that as well. I'm thoroughly enjoying F1 content being back and it will be back full time from launch of F123. But for now, we're very much enjoying our time here at Southampton and having a bit of a revival of late, actually, our... Season kind of kick-started itself in the last episode. Despite the frustrating defeat to Newcastle in the Cup, we were very, very good yesterday. And we're going to need to keep that going today with Manchester United home, Chelsea away, and Aston Villa home as the three league fixtures. And we will look to sim the two Europa Conference League fixtures as hopefully we will be able to get ourselves guaranteed progression through to the knockout stages of that competition without too much hassle. There is definitely going to be hassle in the Premier League games, though, isn't there? So Manchester United, two points above us. We're really not that far away from the European spots at all. So if we win this, we will be at least sixth. So hopefully we can be at least sixth by <laughs> the end of this next game. Drop the video a like if you're continually enjoying the save. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you for your support. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So you don't miss out on any more January transfer window. Not too far away. Here we go. Manchester United line up very strongly indeed. David De Gea, Getraude, Milan Skriniar, Lissandra Martinez and Tyrell Malassia. Uh, Christian Eriksen, Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes is a very familiar looking middle three with a familiar looking two of three. But we are now very familiar with Victor Osimhen being up top for Manchester United. They've got Jadon Sancho on the bench as well at 87 rated. This is Luke Shaw's first game against his former team since signing for us from Old Trafford. And then in the second played game of the day, it'll be Conor Gallagher's first game against his former club since signing from Stamford Bridge. And that one will be at Stamford Bridge as well. Now, fingers crossed we can get a good result here against Manchester United, but you've seen the strength of their starting eleven. It is better than ours, and they would be expected to get the win. However, if they overplay it like that, when they certainly should be shooting, then maybe they won't get the win. Cinemana comes short for it. Nice turn. Conor Gallagher. Blass. See the runner, Aaron Hickey. He is away. And Broya will be in there. Oh, and it's floated brilliantly. Armando Broya's got to be better. It's a great chance. Why Malassi has gone with his feet for that, only you know. Oh, Armando. We might not get a better chance against Manchester United. With a bit of space. Cathrauda is quick but not rapid. It's more his physicality that makes him stand out as an individual. Hero, it's opened up here for Alcaraz as well. Caught out of position quite a bit on the counter from their own corner here, Manchester United. And Suleiman arrives! Anywhere but there, Camaldeen. And that's 1-0, mate. Unbelievable. And play will continue. Still with a Southampton offensive. Can we maybe have one more chance here? On a Gallagher. Blass is going to make a run into the channel. And Blass finds the corner. I didn't expect that to go in. It has done. We lead by a goal to nil against Manchester United. And Lulovic Blass finally finds the back of the net this season. He's hit the woodwork a couple of times. Holds off Gatrauda brilliantly. And, well, accurate is the word. Into the bottom corner. David De Gea sprawling to his left. But can't get there. We're in front at St Mary's. Malassia into Bruno, quickly to Rashford. You know where he's going to go. It's going to be back to Bruno, and we've read it. And Suleimana gets away from Malassia as well. And the counter is on here for Southampton. And it's a lovely footwork from Hickey. And the ball into Blass. Oh, he sent the defender. He's trying to bundle his way through and can't quite sort his feet quickly enough to beat the defender and the goalkeeper and tuck home very nearly a two-goal advantage for Southampton here at St Mary's Stadium, but we haven't quite been able to put it away. And Rast was run off the pitch. Thanks, mate. Mm, it's so difficult to deal with Anthony Shaw with the instinctive clearance. Didn't have anything to do about that. It just did it for me, but I'm glad it did. Oh, but I was just trying to work enough room so I could do something about that. So as not to lose possession. But the press from Manchester United works wonders. And then they get a stroke of luck. Good save by Bazunu. And it couldn't have fallen 
Oh, to a worse man, as far as we were concerned. Victor Osimhen, open goal, 12 yards. That's 1-1. One, one. Oh, he's beating me there, Victor. Is this going to be the second half of all second halves from Manchester United? Perhaps so. Two goals in five minutes, and um, it's all gone wrong. Corner for Manchester United. Salas, who wins the header, it will fall for Lissandro Martinez, who finds Anthony, who's in a good position to shoot on his left. Osimhen will shoot on his left, and Bazunu makes the save. Rashford off for them, presumably Jaden Santo on in his place. It is indeed. Oh, Eriksen's done me there with just the drop of the shoulder. Salas, who will get that away. I can't get there quickly enough with Joe Rebo. Anthony's in again. And now here's Bruno! Kevin Bazunu is trying his best to keep me in it here throughout this spell of Manchester United pressure, but we have already conceded two. And it looks like a third is more likely on its way than it is an equaliser for us. Eriksen back. Ossiman, I just... I can't. I can't do it. It's 3-1 to Manchester United. Whatever Eric Ten Hag said at half... Eric Ten Hag said at half time. Worked. Trying desperately to get up the other end. Now it would probably be fruitless if we do score a second goal anyway Suleimana will deliver this looking for Aribo who's found well and who somehow doesn't score David De Gea with a ridiculous save to deny us a second goal this is going to fall for Suleimana I'm going to knock that down looking for Conor Gallagher it will eventually fall to Conor whose shot is well blocked and with three minutes to go we are resigned to defeat Ah, oh, Victor might be in for a fourth. Shaw's going to try and keep the scoreline respectable, which he's able to do. But it is a 3-1 defeat. At half-time, I thought we might be in for a shock victory here. But no, it's uh, not to be. And unfortunately, a second-half collapse sees us fall to defeat. But certainly Man United were the better team and deserved the win all told our first half pressure was nowhere near the intensity or consistency of their second half pressure we will sim the game against Stonderly A's then and hopefully continue to top the group after that all we need is probably even just a point from this game and we are guaranteed progression through to the next round like we say a point is enough but you want to win as many games as you can Show to everyone else in every other group that we're a team to be reckoned with in this competition this year. That said, we are 1-0 down to Stano Lies now at home, which isn't ideal. Teller, Ollie Watkins, goal! Equaliser for us, takes it just beyond the keeper to open up the angle to squeeze it inside the post. We're level, and we are now getting the point that would guarantee our progression through to the knockout stage here at home. It's going to be a 1-1 draw. We'll take it. It'll do. It's enough. I believe that's us through with Basel beating uh, Vokhoav again. I always mispronounce that, even though I even physically looked at pronunciation the other day. Oh, Slosk Vokhoav. Uh, are we going to get anything from Croatia here? It was the six foot. Oh! See, where is this guy in my RTG? Where are my £2.8 million? Pound players in my RTG and a 900 grand guy as well what ability is the youth staff member that are their five star five star maybe I just need to upgrade all of my scouts in the uh, RTG I'm not sure 2.8 million wow you could be an absolute player let's have a look where are you sir 70 rated Stefan Dragovic already I need something like that in my RTG, please, because he'd go straight in the starting lineup. Chelsea's starting lineup Kepa, Aritha, Balaga between the sticks. Reese James, Baddy, Ushili, Matthias Ginter, and Ben Chilwell. Rodrigo de Paul and Enzo Fernandez. Kulisevsky, Mason Mountain, Reem Sterling, and Patrick Schick up top. So certainly, uh, <laughs> Todd Bowley's been spending more money. Chelsea, a decent team. But after that first half against Manchester United, we have to come into this one confident enough. That second half, I wouldn't. I hesitate to say collapse because Man United were just really good. 
It's not like we fell apart. They picked us apart with just excellent footballing play with their much higher quality players. So I wouldn't say it was a collapse or a bottle, but certainly if we could do something potentially against Manchester United, we've beaten Manchester City this season. We have to be confident that we're in a position to challenge against the big boys this year. We might not actually do it more often than not, but we certainly won't be going into every game presuming we're going to get a two or three goal defeat. That's for sure. Conor Gallagher intercepts. And Rodrigo de Paul does exactly the same. Schick on his left is dangerous. But if he kicks it straight at Bazunu every time, we will be fine. Drill it. And fine Broya, which we've done well. And then support arrives. Broya caught. Play continues. Broya in. Broya! Got to keep that down, Armando. Two good chances for the former Chelsea man. Again, with two former Chelsea players, with the aforementioned in the last game, Conor Gallagher as well. Perro, Alcaraz, quickly in. Use Perro and then go to Alcaraz. And Broya is available in the middle again. And he'll have, oh, Ludovic Blas, who'd gotten away from Enzo Fernandez in the middle. The opportunity just wouldn't create itself. We might be doing so at the other end, though. Rhys James in behind here. Could go for goal. Looks to square it. Brilliant save. And Patrick Schick with the open goal that Victor Osimhen had from even closer range, although more pressure on him. Slams it into the crowd. That is definitely a wasted effort for Chelsea to take the lead. Sometimes Suleiman's footwork is too good for my brain. Aaron Hickey's in behind here. And we'll pull that back. And Blas, brilliant save, leaping away. Kepa Aritha Balaga has done it for two occasions now. One from Blas, one from Broya. No goal for the Saints. Oh, it's going to fall kindly for me. And Alcaraz is in. Come on, Carlos. Please, pal. Oh, Kepa from such close range. Shouldn't stand a chance, but he's got outrageous reactions, the Spaniard. And it's a wonderful save. Suleiman gets away. And Bray is in again. Oh, he's forced wide. Oh, Alcaraz. No, it's Blas was arriving. Brilliant defending from Chelsea again. So close to the goal to go in front. It's onside to Hickey. I thought he might have been off when I first played it. Blas. Connor Gallagher. He's in. Gallagher! Doesn't hit the target. Connor has had a number of really good chances over the past few episodes and isn't scoring the amount of goals that he should be. Oh, it's nicely to Enzo. That is outrageous from Luke Shaw. Just hovered in the passing avenue and then lunged. Kai Havertz has come on up top for Patrick Schick here. Only down as a cam though in game and will be in as a striker in that position. And as such won't be getting as many boosts. He even might even have some negative stats because of that. So Kai, even an 89 rated player overall, might actually not be as effective as he should be, given those talents in that role, just because of how the systems in the game work. Rodrigo de Pau tries to pick his spot, but picks the wrong one. Sulemana, Blas, rides the challenge, beats another. Perro's got nowhere to go. Oh, there's no riding that challenge. What the hell, Rodrigo? Strong, to say the least, De Pau. That studs up as well. That was really dangerous. That's too far out to shoot, even for James Will Prowse. I'm sorry, I just don't have it in the locker myself with regards to game mechanics. I'm sure Jimmy in real life might fancy it. Conor Gallagher still can't score. We'll get it out to Sulemala on the wing. Here comes Hickey. There goes Hickey. Armando, I need you in the box, pal. Broya arriving. Oh! He's getting so close to a goal. We're getting so close to a goal. Just won't go in for us. What have we got to do? Oh, he's past me. All of the chances we've had in this game. And Kai Havertz makes the difference off the bench. Chelsea might just have gifted themselves a 1-0 lead. 
I still believe. Aribo, Connor Gallagher. The space has opened up for Connor. Tuck it back. Oh! Former Chelsea teammate to former Chelsea teammate to current Chelsea player. Not back of net. There's still time. Their time has gone with a poor pass from Roman Perrault at left back. And game over here. Oh, Havertz trying to add a second but can't. I say Man United deserved their win. We deserved more than that on this occasion though. We absolutely could have gotten a point from that. And arguably with the quality of chance we created should have as well. Certainly Conor Gallagher and Amanda Broya had chances to put the ball in the back of the net. That ordinarily you would have expected them to gobble up. Benfica the bid for a two year loan for a dozy which we will accept. He's going to go out from us. We are proud of Alcaraz. We're proud of the whole team to be fair so far this season. But we're dropped to 11th after 11 games. A two week... Uh, international break before then the third game to be played against Aston Villa and a final European game after that he's going to Benfica Trudel Pip Sunshine and Ollie Watkins is up to 80 rated which is good news can we have some good news on the pitch now though against Ollie Watkins's former team Aston Villa Emmy Martinez still the man between the sticks for them Moreno Carlos Elistondo and Digne Kamara and Douglas Luiz Jacob Ramsey with Steffi Mavadidi on the left and then Enes Unal and Jonathan David up top. Uh, relatively familiar looking Aston Villa lineup. Certainly the front few are slightly different. No Jonathan David in the Premier League, that's for sure. Not yet, anyway. Well, on the back of the results we got earlier today, three points here is not necessarily a must, but we are certainly in a position where we could really do with the three points to keep our early season progression alive if we certainly want to be finishing with the potential of a top four then these are the sort of fixes you've got to win if you want to be considered a Champions League level side on a Gallagher around the corner and look at the space opening up here for Alcaraz it's a lovely ball by James Will Prowse just need the drop of the shoulder and then the finesse finish and that's exactly what Carlos Alcaraz provides we are in front at St Mary's and Alcaraz is the man of the moment oh Luke Saw's in the way and I think there's an offside in there. No, apparently there's a free kick. Not a clue what for. Enezu now hits the wall. And then the wall again. And Douglas Lewis. I think Conor Gallagher got three blocks on that. It did hit his hand, though, the last time. So they got the advantage, but they'll play on. And Salisu will clear this time. Villa pressing. But it's a one-man defence at the minute. It's Conor Gallagher versus the world. Well, in Conor. He has been... The one-man defence so far. But we've been a one-man attack so far. And Carlos Alcaraz makes it too. Conor Gallagher. I could put him back there on his own. And I think he'd keep a clean sheet the way things are going so far. And Alcaraz is having the game of his season so far today as well. Superb from Carlos. You love to see it. Great movement as well. Lovely ball through by Broya. And bottom corner. DD into the path of Jonathan David. Back and away trying to block that passing avenue which... They've managed to avoid. Oh, they've also avoided scoring a goal, but I'm not entirely too sure how. Off the post. Now they have scored a goal. How's that for a quick fire ball pass shot in the matter of a split second? Jonathan David with the instinctive first time effort. Salisu's clearance is not great, but a first time pass and a little touch and then the finish straight away. Completely caught us out. Villa are back in it. That's a nice ball, Jacob Ramsey. Salisu's headed clearance isn't great. That's actually looping, well, I thought for a minute, under the bar. Douglas Luiz has got a worldy free kick on him from that sort of range. The first time left-footed volleys, not quite such a sweet connection. That's a nice block by Aaron Hickey, but under the pressure of the Villa front line, he's caved. Enezu now, side netting only. Another really good chance for Aston Villa to get a goal here today. We've had to be particularly fortunate in front of goal, I think, to only have conceded one so far. And if we don't fix up, we are going to be conceding more. Well, Prowse there again. He actually was pointing to go all the way back to the defenders, but I'm not sure about that. He's Broya. Oh, he's worked himself a bit of space. Armando Broya! For all of their attacking and wastefulness, Aston Villa will be very, very rueful. We've extended our lead back to two. And that, fingers crossed, should be three points now. Into Ludovic Blas again. 
Ah, it's brilliantly done. And Sulemana has options. One of which is Broya to slot home. I'm sorry, Aston Villa. You have, even despite the 4-1 scoreline, been the better team. But we'll take the points. That is Garnacho. Thank you. Oh, just able to keep that in. Three minutes added on. We do have two players on a hat trick. And they. Oh, if Alcaraz's pass had been better, one of them might have set the other one up for it. It's going to be a 4 1. Hang on. <laughs> yep. It's going to be a pass to, pull, to blow the whistle there with him about to pull the trigger. But it's going to be a 4 1 victory for us at home against Aston Villa. Against the run of play, but we're particularly thankful that we took our chances when they didn't take theirs. Six efforts, four in. They had 14 shots and only scored one of them, although a number were blocked. In particular, as we mentioned, by Conor Gallagher. We've got a game to simulate at the end of the month against Basel in the Europa Conference League, but I believe we're through in that competition, and we are indeed. So we're not going to worry too much about that. We'll sim it with the rotation side and to be honest in the interests of time i might just quick sim it with the rotation side ba -ba 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 -ba! dub yeah joel rebo and nathan teller with the goals to give us a 2-0 win and that will seal not only the progression that we already had but top spot as well in the group so in the league that victory against aston villa pulls us back up to 10th we're above arsenal now as you see and we're only three points off Spurs in sixth and four off Manchester City in fifth. So, sorry, no, we're two points off Spurs and three points off Manchester City in fifth and only four points off Newcastle United in fourth. So, despite defeats to the top two today, we're still very much in the hunt. I see Chelsea are that far clear already. Wow. Dragovic has completed a position change. 70 rated Cam, two. 70 rated left mid. I really want a talent like that in my Youth Academy RTG, please. If you don't mind game, that would be lovely. Well, speaking of that series, I'm going to go and record an episode of it now. In fact, I'm going to go and record the season finale of it now. So do join me over on the main channel for that. Of course, feel free to uh, continue your support here on this channel with the Southampton save. Or of course, the F1 save that is continuing. F1 23, not that far away now. We'll have a look at you. F123, only, well, less than a month now away, actually. We'll have a look at you as well. So, fingers crossed you guys will show some support for that when it arrives. And hopefully, we can have a, a great My Team. 3.5 million Theo Coles! I think I just need to upgrade my scouts in the Youth Academy RTG, don't I? To 5-star, five 5-star, five because we are getting a number of high-quality talents now. Theo Coles, how good are you, mate? Where's the first one? There he is, a 67-rated cam. And 85 curve. Wow. Yeah, he's... Well, to be fair, he's got half decent defensive stats with 52 slide tap. He might be more of a centre mid than a cam because his finishing is not great, is it? Finishing of 59. What's it going to take to change to a centre mid? Two weeks. Let's do that. And then there are a couple others that might have been okay. Ketso Kumalo. I mean, if he... Ugh, short passing's rubbish, but if he grows well enough, he might be something... I saw someone mention to me somewhere recently that scouting Germany might be a good sh good shout for getting some high quality players. So I might give that a go. Five foot nine, Tanu and Kosi. I'm actually just going to let you go, pal. I'm sorry. And Bradley Reeve. Oh, I thought for a minute it was six foot five. He's not. He's only six foot. And ooh, it's good ball control, curve and dribbling, free kick accuracy as well. But finishing, not quite so good. But we can, of course, certainly improve on that. With Poacher, so let's get him higher rated too. Right, eventually, end of the episode. You guys do like to see the monthly uh, reports from the Youth Scouts though, so I thought I'd show you them. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. We've got the Baku Grand Prix for you on the channel tomorrow. And then, furthermore, Southampton Career Mode on Thursday. Remembering what day it is in the week. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.